systems are offline. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Keep the lights! We all go a little mad sometimes. Meddling kid. Trace the call is coming from inside the Be house. Be a friend. Be very How's it going, people? Welcome to the first ever episode of Adventures in Murderland. Uh, This is a true crime comedy podcast focusing specifically on LGBTQ plus crimes, but we probably will end up doing some other big, big name criminals who might not be part of that community at some point. Uh... I need to introduce us, actually. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Mike James, and with me is my host, my boyfriend, and my partner in crime, Alan. Hello. Hello. you guys? Are we um, saying your surname, by the way? I didn't even think. Are we? Um, it's all over your Twitter anyway, so. Yeah. I guess that seed has been sown. Um... <laughs> Just to let everyone know, this being the first episode of the podcast, it's probably going to be a bit of a shit show, maybe, but we're going to be... We'll try our hardest. We'll try our hardest, and we'll sort of uh, iron out the creases as we go along, hopefully, but forgive us if this is the biggest pile of trash that you ever listened to. (laughs) We are... Just going to try our best with this for today. Um, The first 10 minutes or so of the podcast is probably just going to be us sort of warming up and getting into the feel of things, maybe. So if you want to skip that, uh, just skip right ahead, maybe 10, 15 minutes or so from now, and uh, you can get into the grizzly grizzlies. Um, So, question. Okay. Okay. Why should people be bothered about us making a podcast? (laughs) That's a big question. That is a big question. That is the Um, question that will be on everyone's lips because there are so many true crime podcasts out there. If you just scroll through any podcast listing, there is so many. There there is a lot. But I think what makes us a little bit different is just what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be like... LGBTQ plus murders. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. I don't think there's a lot of podcasts that do that, to be fair. No, who's focused specifically on that. But I'm worried that, you know, we might get maybe 64 episodes down and we just run out of people to involve. <laughs> so we might have to do some uh, do some people who aren't necessarily involved in LGBTQ+. Plus. Well, I think, to be fair, we could do, like, have mainly it's going to be the LGBTQ+, plus, um, murders focused around, and then just yeah. every now and again just dot in another... Another randomer. Yeah, of maybe. course. Yeah, I'll go with that. So we're going to be focusing um, (laughs) predominantly on that, but there might be the odd few others thrown in there just for good measure. Um, The other thing as well is what I was thinking is that in regards to uh, podcasts, you don't really hear many podcasts which are done by couples, especially gay couples actually as well. So hopefully, um, I'm hoping that we will be able to offer a unique perspective on uh, true crime, especially we're making a true crime comedy podcast where neither of us are experts in true crime or Or comedians, professional (laughs) comedians. So this, uh, yeah, this is just heading straight for disaster, but hopefully not. You never know until you try these things. Um, I think this murder might actually be quite a long one that we're going to be doing today. Okay. So I might just start kind of now-ish. Sorry. Also, guys, just to let you know, we might have some technical hiccups. Just because, again, first episode, might be some things going wrong. We might not have tuned things in right, so things might not get picked up. But, again, we're going to try our best. Um, One second. So, I've got a crud ton of notes on this guy. And you guys out there... Uh, well, you'll know from the title of the podcast who this is, and some people might know who this is. Uh, the guy's name 
is Dennis Nielsen. I have never heard of this man before. I know. I know you've never heard of him. And um, to be honest, I had kind of heard of him, but I didn't realize all the ins and outs and the intricacies of sort of what he did. And I didn't realize sort of how big a deal this guy was as well. Um, So, Dennis Nielsen. Born 23rd of November 1943 in a place called Fraserburr, Scotland. I have definitely pronounced that place wrong. Um, He's British, as you can imagine. British serial killer. Uh, He did live in London and he's also known by the names of the Musewell Hill Murderer and the Kindly Killer. The kindly killer. Yeah, it's a bit of an oxymoron, really. Putting the words kind and killer next to each other doesn't always uh, seem (laughs) synonymous with each other. But you'll sort of... uh, It will kind of make sense the more we go on with it. Okay. Um, Nielsen... The way these notes are written, they always put in true crime things the surnames, so they always call them by the surnames, which I prefer to call them by the first names. So, on the notes, because... Hands in the air, I have copy and pasted a fair bit of this from different <laughs> websites. Uh, if for some reason I refer to him as Dennis one time, then Nielsen the next time, please don't put me up on that. It's I'll, still the same person. It's exactly yeah. the same person. It might get confusing, but I'll try my best just to call him Dennis. Uh, so <laughs> Dennis killed at least 15 men and boys between 1978 and 1983. So that's quite a big uh, body count he's got going. Um Due to similarities between the crimes and their sexuality, uh, Dennis has also been referred to as the British Jeffrey Dahmer. So that might give you a bit of an inclination as to where this story is possibly going to be heading, (laughs) and it's not a happy place. Um, But first off... And one of the things that I like about uh, True Crime Podcast is because you get the opportunity to be able to delve into, uh, you, you spend a bit more time with these people in terms of their backstories and their childhoods, and you can sort of paint a picture yeah. a little bit more about, you know, you can you can summarize and try to come to your own conclusions about how they ended up being the people that they were. The thing is, though, it's certain ways you do it, it can make you feel sorry for that person, and yeah, and... It's not a good thing to feel sorry for that. Oh, <laughs> by this, by the end of this story, you will not be having any empathy or sympathy for this guy whatsoever. It was, it was just like with that uh, movie, uh, My Friend Owen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually did feel a little bit sorry for him. I was like, oh, I was conflicted at the end of that. <laughs> I will definitely give you that because I was like. Oh, I but he just wanted a friend. <laughs> I was like, I would have been his friend. I could have been the hero of that story. But we know it's a true story and uh, things yeah. didn't turn out that way. Um, and also, you know, it's one of those things. If, if someone's got a predisposition towards uh, killing, maybe it's inevitable anyway. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Dennis. Um, He was born in a small fishing village in the heart of Aberdeenshire in Scotland um, to a Norwegian father who was an ex-soldier by the name of Olav Magnus, which is a fantastic name. Uh, His mother was Scottish and her name was Betty White, not the Betty White, not the Golden Girl woman. Yeah, not her. Um, That would bring a whole new dynamic to this story. (laughs) Um, uh, His father was an alcoholic and he apparently showed little interest in his family, spending a lot of the time away from him and his mom, um, which inevitably brought about the divorce of the two of them. Uh, At this point in time, Dennis was four years old uh but from what i can see the the father did sort of stick around a little bit uh and it wasn't until dennis was six which his dad just completely sort of fucked off on the two of them so sounds like oh shit yeah um which is you know you know things like that happen people fall out get divorced it's not too uncommon um Pretty much True. most people I know have got divorced families nowadays, so it's not... Um, but I think back then it was a very different situation, wasn't it? Yeah. I think to be divorced was, was a bit more of a rarity. Bit of a taboo, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, people were a lot more religious back then, weren't mm. they, so... Yeah. 
so yeah, his mum did remarry. Good for her. Um, and she sent Dennis Girl to Betty. live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she sent Dennis to go live with his grandparents. I uh, don't know why specifically, uh, but she did. That was her choice. I think she probably went and got a job somewhere, maybe. Um, he lived with them just for five years, and he became really close with his granddad. He was called Andrew White. Um, his granddad seems like a really nice guy. No issues whatsoever with the granddad. Um, after the five years, though, he got sent back to, to live with his mum. Okay. So he sort of got really close with his granddad and then got taken away. Um then on Halloween Day 1951, uh, his granddad was found dead, which sucks big time. He was only 62, which in the grand scheme of things is pretty young, to be honest with you. Can I ask a question? In what way was he found dead? Was he found dead? In- he was found dead in a fishing boat. And I tried to find out why he died or how he died, but I couldn't find anything. So it's not relevant to the story? story plot with itself now no the death okay. itself you know we're not, we're not talking about the first kill right, okay, okay. Um, this is just uh, still the background yeah this is just the background you know we had a close relationship with his granddad and got separated from him and while he was separated from him his granddad died um, but this next bit is sort of um, one of the uh, events that Dennis himself points to as maybe a key factor in his becoming who he became. Uh, because after his granddad died, his mum, she was really insistent on the fact that he saw his granddad's body. So, and oh, okay. he really did not want to be doing that. Um, he went and saw the body and he found it very very uh traumatic and he was under the impression that his granddad was just sleeping and that he was going to come back at some point oh but no a few you know year or months went by or whatever and then he realized you know obviously that wasn't gonna happen mm. um a little side note for that just, that seems to be sowing the seeds for um what's to come of what's to come, and the fact that he says that you know the whole experience made him feel alone and isolated, and he felt rejected, and that's probably got some, you know, a, a real psychologist. <laughs> this is me being pseudo psychologist. <laughs> you know, the, he has issues with interpersonal relationships going down the line, and he has a very strong need for companionship at okay. some points. Uh, he always, you know, from this point forward, he always really feels alone. There's a couple of little points that we'll get to where that doesn't happen, but uh, for the vast majority of his life from this point forward, he, be- he feels like just completely... Isolated. Know, yeah, 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 his would be the word. Um, now, between uh, 1951 and 1961, so that's a whole 10 years, I couldn't find any details about what happened in between that. Um, there was one moment uh, which uh, it is debatable if this is true because it came from Dennis himself and just like sort of Dharma was when he got caught, yeah. sometimes they embellish the truth and they um, they all add in details just to make themselves sound more interesting maybe. Kind of glorify it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I don't know if this is glorifying it. Apparently, he fell up his brother while he was asleep, which... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the brother thing, um, it will sort of uh, make sense to a point, because what Dennis said was that while his brother was asleep, he saw him lying there. And the image of his brother just lying asleep, uh, he... Th- thought that was kind of arousing so he gave him a little feel feel and oh. his, bro- his brother did not reciprocate according to dennis he just sort of turned away and was like Ugh. so dennis just sort of was like yeah that's not happening yeah and rightly so uh which is a bit weird to say the least um it's just a little bit just a touch just a touch weird uh to be feeling up your brother uh, but then again I read this thing a while back, and uh, it's weird. And apparently, like a lot of kids, will sort of ex- not a, not a lot. Not, I'm not talking like ninety percent. I'm talking like some kids will experiment. A yeah, they will. It's not uncommon for people to experiment with siblings, which is gross in my eyes. But I don't know. yeah, I, I, don't, know. I, don't, I don't think I could do that. To be fair, no, not my <laughs> preference either. To be honest with you, uh, but some people do it. Um, but 
again, it, you know, the way Dennis did it was a bit weird. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, that's the only thing we've got in between those 10 years. Uh, okay. 1961, uh, this is the next thing that we know about him. 